Less thing to lose sleep over. Simply call 800-496-7453 to order now or request a free info pack and find out why 9 out of 10 caregivers and users would recommend the Pairwick system. You're watching Your View. Thank you for joining us. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the Mightier 1090 AM. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. We welcome you back inside the Seven Mile Casino studios of Kaplan and Crew, along with Grande and the Brown Man. We are back onto the airwaves of 1090. We are You back. are back. Well, I'm back. You guys have been on. That's right. Uh, we are back on television on Channel 4 San Diego. We're also on Channel 4 Santa Barbara and on the Cox Your View Network. That gives us Channel 118 in Orange County and in Palos Verdes. And, of course, always available on YouTube. Easiest thing to do is just find us on our website, kaplanandcrew.com. That's where you find Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook posts, cited questions, um, Browner's blog. There's just so much going on on our website. So that's really home base, Kaplan and Crew. Dot com. Um, Grande and Browner, let me let me ask you guys a question here. Tonight is the beginning of the NBA Finals between Phoenix and Milwaukee. Alex, you seem to be done with the NBA playoffs when the Lakers were officially eliminated. Are you going to be into the finals starting tonight? Uh, it depends. If Suns and four guys in attendance, I'll, I'll stick around. You know, I, I'm, I he got me into that series against the Nuggets. And I was into the series until the Suns lost their first game because then that meant Suns and four guy went away. So, and I'm not really joking. I'm dead serious. Like he's the only reason why I kept watching basketball. I thought it, I thought he was hilarious, and I thought him becoming this little celebrity was hilarious. But no, I have no interest in watching a Giannis list Bucks against the Suns tonight. No. Okay, Browner. We know you're the resident hardcore watch every game during the NBA regular season kind of fan. So when I ask you, are you into it? I think I already know my answer, but could you sell just a little bit to a guy like Alex who's only into it because of Sons and Four guy or a guy like me who I, I kind of, after the Clippers were eliminated, it took more time for the Eastern Conference Finals to end. And, and in that period of time, they've lost me a little bit with the exception though, and it's not really related to the game, but it's related to the broadcast. This Rachel Nichols, Maria Taylor thing, that is the thing I want to talk about here. But Browner, can you sell us and everybody who's perhaps not as interested in the finals why we should watch this finals? Okay. Buckle up. I, what if I told ah, you? Hold on. Okay. Well, good. All right. Okay. Buckle up in. Now. Strapped in. Yes. What if I told you a two time MVP? two-time mm -hmm. defensive player of the year was going to attempt to submit his name as one of the greatest young players in the history of sports starting tonight. But the only thing standing in his way is a grizzled old 16-year vet looking to finally cap his career off as one of the greatest point guards ever. Tonight, that battle starts on ABC. All right. Not bad. But question. Please. Two two time NBA MVP, one time defensive player of the year, is not playing tonight. Mm. And Doubtful. does not start tonight. Doubtful. Didn't say didn't say was, didn't say wasn't. Doubtful. And two, if they win, he will get all the credit. If they lose, but he was hurt. So if they win, no one will remember he missed the first game if they win the series and he plays. He'll be the youngest two time MVP to ever be an NBA champion. The, you know, I, I, I know Scott correct. wasn't here. Correct. I think that's I know, correct. I know Scott wasn't here last week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. That, but I, you know, I was expecting somebody to ask me, like, you know, do you respect what the Bucks did beating the Hawks here, without here their go. best player? Here you go. Here he. You go. know, but it never came up. You know, I mean, here that that conversation go. just went away after the, the Clippers got eliminated, and I was nobody asked me about respecting the Bucks for doing the same thing though. And that you know the Hawks had their best player back, so you know the that best player was out. Never came up. The best player was out, and the game not he in the, played not in he the was elimination pathetic. Game. He was pathetic in that game. He should have stayed out. You know pathetic. what? Though? They didn't have their best player. You know, you're, you're talking about this whole. You're, you're you're taking your shots about this this whole conversation we were having about the Clippers when they worked their way back into the series against the Suns, and it was like, 
hey, why not respect what they've done? And I got to tell you guys, like for me, the Suns playing the Clippers and the Clippers not having Kawhi is what made it an interesting story. Right. If if it would have been the Suns and say um, Portland as an example, or the Nuggets, yeah, I, I would have had like no interest, you know. So if it if it if it wasn't for the Kawhi connection to San Diego, and if it wasn't for the Clipper, I don't know. I, I'm not sure I'd even call it hate, but more like the Clipper irrelevance. That's why it became kind of a story, at least the way I looked at it, anyway. You know, but anyway, yeah. another story for another <laughs> time. But here, here's what I really like to talk about. You know, on Sunday, I started reading this story about Rachel Nichols. And I am I am actually fascinated by this story, but I wasn't sure if everybody was following it. So early this morning, I called a couple of friends, just regular sports fan friends, not like hardcore NBA people at all. And I called them and I said, Hey, I'm just curious. Have you read this Rachel Nichols, Maria Taylor story? And all three of the guys that I called all knew the story. Everybody knew the story. So I really wanted to talk about it, but I wasn't sure if everybody was hip to it. So that being said, let me, well, John, you just Browner just made this look like, like, Hip to it. You said yeah. hip to it. Oh, yeah. man. Use another word. Hip to it. Alex, are you hip to it? Well, hip, I, I am hip to it. Yeah, hip to it means I, I'm familiar with the story. I know, you know? old man, but the, our younger audience may not know what that means. Really? Yeah. Really? I think yeah. that's pretty common. I think everybody knows what it means. Okay. Okay. Boomer. I, okay actually, boomer. <laughs> ask your daughter, does she know what hip to it means? I think anybody could probably figure it out. Are okay. you hip to the story? Do you know what it means? You were in Florida okay. too long, dog. I guess so, man. <laughs> um, speaking of Florida, real quick, um, I'm on a new show. Alex put me on to F1, and I started Oh, my it, God. But I'm, but I'm not deep into it yet. But, how many um, episodes? I'm, oh, I'm only like two or three in. I mean, that, that gives you an idea of how not deep into it I am. But I'll mm -hmm. tell you the show that I'm very deep into right now is called Startup. Have you guys heard of this show? It's on Netflix. Yes. Have you, anybody watched it? No. Oh, no. my God. My, I'm biting my fingernails off. This show is so suspenseful. It's incredible. Um, and it's got it's it's one of those shows that right now I'm so into that every moment that I'm not doing something that I need to do, I just I'll take 10 minutes here and 15 minutes there. And if I can get a full episode in, I will. It's that incredible. You can watch TV like that. I can't watch TV. I have to watch the entire thing. I can't watch portions of it and then go back to it. I can't yeah, do that. Me neither. Yeah, I can do it. I can pick it up. So hmm. anyway, the show is called Startup and it's incredible. Okay. Let me By go way, to, Mac, yeah. Max Verstappen won again. He Lewis Hamilton is gonna finish second. See what you've done. Browning. See what you've done. <laughs> See what you've done. Oh God. Five this straight gonna, races for Red Bull, man. It's gonna be bolted all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Browner didn't listen to the bolted podcast. He's not gonna and watch He's the not F1 watching show. Drive to Survive. No, he's not. Let me let me tell you guys the story that I most want to talk about today and get your opinions on this. Um, and I, I will do that. I just want to say one quick thing. Um, I had to call a bunch of friends this morning and I say a bunch, I called three people just cause I wanted to ask them, are you familiar with this Rachel Nichols story? And all three of these guys who are not NBA fans, really they're, but they're sports fans. They were like, Oh yeah, I'm following the story. This is really interesting stuff. So when I heard that from these guys, I thought, okay, then I would think general sports fans probably know this Rachel Nichols story. So I want to get to that and I want to get you guys' opinions and I want to dive deeper into it because I got to tell you guys, I'm, I got to just be candid here and who knows, I may get myself fired from my ESPN job by even saying this kind of stuff, but I don't feel good about it at all. I kind of feel slimy. I don't like what's going on here. Um, I don't know Rachel Nichols. I don't know Maria Taylor. I don't know any of the people involved. I don't know Kendrick Perkins. I don't know Richard. Uh, uh, what's Jefferson. Jefferson? Jefferson. I almost said Hamilton. I, 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 I couldn't. I don't know any of these people. Okay, I don't know any of them. Um, but I, I'm, I'm following the story in the New York Times, and the subsequent like apologies on air and everything, 
And just the whole thing feels slimy to me on every level, by the way, on every level. And I'll, I'll go into the different levels here in just a matter of seconds. Before I do, I'm just going to send a shout out to our people from the Total T Clinic, TotalTClinic.com. Guys, get your testosterone levels checked. It'll take 15 minutes. And I'm telling you right now, if you're feeling slow, tired, sluggish, weak, you've got you know no inspiration in the bedroom, it could be because your testosterone levels are low. You get them back to where they belong, all of a sudden you're a whole different guy, okay? And, and your life can be completely different. You can be that young stud that you once were. Get to the Total T Clinic, totaltclinic.com. Okay, here goes. Before I even get into this Rachel Nichols rant, give me an initial opinion, Alex. Are you following it? Do you know it? Do you have an initial opinion on it? Yes or no? Um, definitely not like following it, like where I where I have like this big opinion on it. I know about it. I've seen it. I heard it. I saw the apology. Um, but no, I, I don't because I don't watch any of these things. So I have no interest in it. If that's like, I just don't. I think there's a big, there might be a bigger issue at ESPN that that that's pe- probably what people are talking about. But as far as the personalities themselves, dude, I watch the basketball game and I turn it off right after the basketball game. And I don't tune in before the basketball game either. So this whole like who should be the host thing and who should be the silent reporter thing. Don't even don't even know who Maria Taylor was until yesterday. Yeah, isn't that funny? Browner, uh, by the way, you didn't know who Maria Taylor was, but did you know that Maria Taylor was in the middle um, of a contract negotiation with ESPN? And this is according to the reports. They offered her $5 million a year. $5 million a year. She turned it down because according to the report, she wanted Stephen A money, which means $8 million a year. They took the offer off the table. Because remember, they were asking people like Kenny Maine to take massive pay cuts. And and so they took the offer off the table. They made it a lesser offer, and she denied it. And um, so we're talking about big money here. I'm blown away. I don't really know Maria Taylor's career that well either. Um, and we're $5 million, and you say no to that during COVID? So, Brown, are you have an initial opinion on this story? Are you following it? 100% following it. I think Maria Taylor is a rising star in the, in the sports world, but sometimes people uh, read their own clippings too much. I love Rachel Nichols. I love everything she's done from the jump. When the jump first started, I, I thought that she should have been the original host of the NBA countdown show, but I understand why they gave the job to Marie, Maria Taylor. I thought that uh, they were trying to uh, Michelle Beadle, Rachel Nichols, and by that I mean spread her too thin across too many – uh, basketball platforms. And so I thought hiring Maria Taylor to do the countdown show was the right thing to do. Um, I just don't think she's good. But that's my personal opinion. I didn't take all, see, I'm the opposite of Alex. I didn't take all this. I watched the right. NBA. You're a much better person to ask right. than me. I watched the NBA countdown show. I also, I, I DVR the jump every day. Maria Taylor is not the right host for that show. Yes, I know she played basketball. That's irrelevant to whether or not a person can host a show. She's not the right host for that show but with that show is not the jump we're talking about it's, it's no it's, it's nba the, countdown it's the pregame right. it's the pregame show and a halftime show to yeah. the actual game yeah. i just i me i don't think she's very good at that i think she's great at college football i think she's outstanding at college football the nba basketball aspect of it is a no for me and i don't know what that makes people think of me or if i'm not supporting black women or whatever the case may be i really don't care She's been better at college football. They should find better ways to put her in college football as opposed to trying to force her into college basketball or in, into NBA basketball because she played college basketball. It doesn't make sense. Now, all this stuff about Rachel Nichols being racist, and I don't know Rachel Nichols, so I don't know the answer to that question. I really don't. All I know is she's been <laughs> reporting basketball. That's the only way I know her. Yeah. And that's it. I don't yeah. know her doing anything else. Yeah, I, I'm going to tell you guys. So I, I literally sat on this. Like, I mean, all weekend long, it was bothering me. I, I know this sounds weird. It was literally bothering me because I feel like there's a lot of layers to this story. Yes. Started off, started off with this. You're Rachel Nichols. You are in in or, in a hotel room in Orlando. You're not an engineer. You're not a camera operator. You know, you may not even be particularly tech savvy. But ESPN has given you equipment to use in your hotel room. (laughs) This is in the middle of the pandemic and in the middle of the NBA bubble last year. So for Rachel Nichols to call a gentleman named Adam Mendelson, Adam Mendelson 
is LeBron James's like go-to PR guy. By the way, I know Adam Mendelson. I don't know him very, very well, but I know him enough that I can call him or I can get on the phone with him. Um, he's on the receiving end of this. Mm. Rachel Nichols doesn't know that the equipment is recording her. Adam Mendelson doesn't know that the equipment is recording her. And they're having a private conversation that to me, it, Rachel Nichols doesn't understand one thing in this conversation the way I hear it. Everybody in every business is replaceable. Yes. Okay. If, if you think you're not replaceable, then you need to really, really look in the mirror and say, who am I? Not, not who am I on TV? Not who am I when the paychecks clear from ESPN? Who am I? Because here's what I can tell you about ESPN. ESPN is like the NFL. They will survive no matter who sits at the desk. Like the NFL will survive when Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers aren't playing quarterback anymore. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that, that ESPN will survive without Chris Berman? Yeah. E ESPN will survive without Stuart Scott ESPN will survive without Dan Patrick or, or even a Smith. If Stephen a Smith were to leave and go to Fox ESPN will more than survive. No problem. Okay. ESPN like the NFL will survive regardless of who their star players are. I think that Rachel Nichols misunderstood who she really is in the bigger world, because what I heard her say was this, and in fact, we'll play it for you. But what I heard her say is essentially she's great. This, this, this girl, Maria Taylor, she's great, but she's not taking what belongs to me. And the problem for Rachel Nichols is none of it belongs to you. You're an employee. You're in it. That's all you are. You don't own it. You're not Oprah. Okay. You don't own anything. You are simply an employee. And if the employer decides for whatever reason, now your accusation is they decided because Maria Taylor is black and because they have a crappy record of diversity hirings. Mm -hmm. So but that's, but that's twofold. I don't mean to interrupt you, but that's twofold because I, that's the part about it I wish she would have been a little more open-minded about because when they fired Jamel Hill and Michael Smith from the 6 p.m. Sports, ESPN Sports Center, it was because of the, out, the uproar that half of their viewing audience had over those two people and what they were saying on the 6 p.m. Sports Center. So her accusation that someone got this because they were black, people have also, according to reports, lost jobs at ESPN, well, Jamel Hill will tell you they lost a job because they were black. So there's been a lot of people at ESPN, Michelle Beadle, uh, uh, now Katie Nolan, who people go, what do they do and why do they make so much money? So I, Rachel Nichols' impression of how Maria Taylor got the job seems kind of uh, uh, um, selfish because she easily could have found out Maria Taylor's not new. Maria, Maria Taylor's been around for a while. People just started to come. She just started to come to the forefront for basketball viewers because they shoehorned her in a place where she really didn't fit. Now, I don't know whether Rachel Nichols deserved that job or what, but I thought she was a better fit for it because the people who are on that show, I've seen her have a better rapport with them. Yeah, but, but you know what Rachel Nichols' contention was? My contract says I'm the host on the desk of this particular show. Okay. That, that's what Rachel Nichols contention was. I'm contracted to do this job and they're moving me from what I signed up for. Well, guess what? That's because you're an employee. They're the bosses and they make the decisions. And I can imagine I'm, I'm, I'm putting this out there. I'm, this is hypothetical. I know nothing of this, but here goes. You're a white executive at ESPN. The NBA bubble is happening. What was going on in the world during the NBA bubble? Mm. Right? 
So Black Lives Matter may have been published on the on the floor. I say published, printed on the floor. If I'm a, a you know a white executive, I might think to myself, you know, given what's going on in the world right now, a talented, beautiful, uh, experienced basketball person like Maria Taylor, she might fit better right now in that role. And so Rachel Nichols, in my opinion, overestimated what she really means to the company. She's just one of hundreds of on-air talents. That's all. She may, I, have, she may be good if you like her. Right. She may have achieved a certain level because she worked super hard. She may make a lot of money. She may be well-respected. All may be true. But she doesn't actually own the job. Now, she would say, but I'm contracted to that job. They made a decision to go in a different direction. Sometimes you're the starting quarterback. But then all of a sudden, they're like, you know what? Let's try something different. You know, th there's another uh, part of this story that we don't have time to talk about right now, but hopefully we can get to later, that this, is a, it, this, this story has a lot more to it. That's well, all wait, let, let me tell you what the next part of it is, though, is that Maria Taylor... A, this I found this story fascinating. Her contract is up. So I wonder where how that plays. Hold on. Time out. L let us finish this. Coming right back. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by... BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Hey, Dave Smith here. Make sure you listen to my show on the Mightier 1090, 6 to 10 p.m. Saturday and Sunday night. The only local sports talk in all of Southern California on the weekends right here on the Mightier 1090. The all-new and Mightier 1090. Great things can be achieved when a community comes together. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Watch Doing More Sunday night at 6 on Your View or stream it online at yourview.com. Ronald McDonald House Charities of San Diego keeps families close to their hospitalized child. Stop by your local McDonald's today to make a donation or donate online. Welcome to the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank and our 90,000 square foot facility. We feed 350,000 people every single month. Many people ask, how can I help? You can volunteer for the San Diego Food Bank. Just go to sandiegofoodbank.org, register to volunteer. No group is too small, no group is too large, but those volunteers are integral to our success in feeding the community. Another way you can help is by hosting a food drive. Just go online and register your group, your company, your organization. It's that easy. Another great way is through our virtual food drive, where you can literally buy food on our behalf. And lastly, another great way to make an impact is to go online and make a financial contribution to the San Diego or North County Food Bank. On behalf of the San Diego Food Bank, our staff, our volunteers, and the 350,000 people we serve every month, thank you for helping us fight hunger and feed hope in San Diego County. Held over for one more month at BMW of San Diego. Get 0.9% APR for 36 months on all in stock 2017, 2018, and 2019 BMW certified models. BMW San Diego, Kearney Mesa Road, and the 163. Time now for Kaplan Accrued tonight's Community Connect. Shelter to Soldiers selects dogs from shelters and rescue groups all throughout California. ideal candidate at Shelter to Soldier is eight months to a year and a half old. They're confident in different environments. They have strong social drive. Uh, another motivator like food or toy drive. And ultimately, these are dogs that want to have a job uh, and that have a greater purpose to become a service dog. Currently, about 85% of our dogs pass their service dog training. 
but if they don't pass, they become a career change. Uh, we don't like to use the word failure around here. Um, so career change to an emotional support animal, or if that doesn't work out, then they career change to a pet dog. Still finding a loving placement and purpose in life. Welcome to the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank and our 90,000 square foot facility. We feed 350,000 people every single month. Many people ask, how can I help? You can volunteer for the San Diego Food Bank. Just go to sandiegofoodbank.org, register to volunteer. No group is too small, no group is too large, but those volunteers are integral to our success in feeding the community. Another way you can help is by hosting a food drive. Just go online and register your group, your company, your organization. It's that easy. Another great way is through our virtual food drive, where you can literally buy food on our behalf. Lastly, another great way to make an impact is to go online and make a financial contribution to the San Diego or North County Food Bank. On behalf of the San Diego Food Bank, our staff, our volunteers, and the 350,000 people we serve every month, thank you for helping us fight hunger and feed hope in San Diego County. It's Pharrell here inviting you to catch my shows on the Mightier 1090. We're on twice every Monday through Friday, 1 to 3 p.m. and 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific. Trust me, all the other sports stations are sleeping with your wife. The all-new and Mightier 1090. Sometimes they say it might work, it might not work. And so I ask myself the question, like, why even get the vaccine if it can also harm you? For me, it's like taking a 50-50 chance. Hi, Andrea. Some say that the vaccine is harmful or that it might not work, but that's not true. Millions of people have been vaccinated with no ill effects, and I can tell you that getting the vaccine is far safer than not getting it. Cancer Center is the only comprehensive cancer center in San Diego, which has a NCI designation, which NCI stands for National Cancer Institute. And this is designated to only the highest possible ratings for cancer centers in the country. And that means that it's experts in every medical subspecialty pushing boundaries to, for difficult to treat cancers. We have a unique blend of cancer research and patient care, which really helps us take care of the whole patient from bench to bedside interventions with the latest research. And we're really pushing the boundaries to treat each individual cancer as much as possible. We're very proud of our leadership here in the community at UCSD. Here's Kaplan accrued tonight's 60 second timeout with Haley Stasiak. The San Diego Legion got a win against their Western Conference rival Seattle Seawolves on Saturday, 34-21. Cameron Clark earned Major League Rugby's number two in top five tries from the weekend when he broke a few tackles and turned on the wheels for a try in the win. Cecil Africa was named Man of the Match, while Ryan Matthias and Patty Ryan were named to MLR's top 15 impact players for the week. The Legion will finish out the regular season against Old Glory DC this Saturday. They currently sit at fourth in the Western Conference with 37 points. The top two teams in the conference will head to the conference finals. That's your 60 second timeout. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60 second timeout is presented by Your View. Game time. The best games from the past season on your view. Great things can be achieved when a community comes together. 
Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Watch Doing More Sunday night at 6 on Your View or stream it online at yourview.com. Ronald McDonald House Charities of San Diego keeps families close to their hospitalized child. Stop by your local McDonald's today to make a donation or donate online. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio. SoCal Sports Talk. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight. Powered by the mightier 1090 in your view. Featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. All right, great friends. It is a Tuesday afternoon. The entire family is back on the airwaves of 1090, back on to cable television, Channel 4 San Diego, and the Cox Your View Network, which is Channel 4 Santa Barbara. It's Channel 118 in Palos Verdes in Orange County. And uh, also always on YouTube. You can find us there. But the easiest thing to do is just find us on our website, kaplanandcrew.com, K-A-P-L-A-N, kaplanandcrew.com. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios along with Grande and the Brown Man. Okay, we were deep into this story about Rachel Nichols versus Maria Taylor. I think the one thing that Browner and I agree on is that Rachel Nichols probably overestimated how important she is to ESPN. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, 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 a hundred times yes. Because I'm going to tell you guys right now, I loved Chris Berman, but you know what? Um, just because Chris Berman isn't on ESPN as frequently as he once was, I'm still going to watch. Yep. I loved Kenny main. Kenny Maine's not with the company anymore. I'm still going to watch. Um, John Clayton was let go a couple years ago. I'll still watch Adam Schefter for NFL insider news. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Stuart Scott has passed. I'm still going to watch sports center. Rich Eisen left 20 years ago and went to the NFL network. I'm still going to watch sports center. It, it doesn't matter to me. I'm a sports fan, and I'm now conditioned to watch ESPN. Skip Bayless leaves and goes and becomes a talking head over at Fox. Doesn't matter to me. They move in Max Kellerman. If and when the day comes that Stephen A. Smith decides to retire, leave, quit, get fired, I don't know, dies, I'm, I'm still going to watch ESPN. I, my point is, is that, when you're an employee of a company, I don't know if dies. well, I mean, he's going to die someday. We're all going to die someday. But when, when you're an employee of a company, that's what you are. You're in a, you, you can make 5 million a year, 8 million a year. It, it doesn't matter what the numbers are. You might be a star. You might be uh, an important part of the team, but you're replaceable. Listen, Joe Montana was replaceable. Dan Marino was eventually replaceable. Drew Brees is going to be replaced now. Tom Brady's going to get replaced. Aaron Rodgers has already had his replacement drafted. Everybody, no matter how great you are, no matter how much money you make, when you are an employee, you're replaceable. You know who's not replaceable? Oprah. Like, like Oprah owns what she does. And so, all of it, the television yeah. show, the magazine, you name it, whatever she appears on, she owns the segment that she's appearing on. She does an interview. She owns that interview. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you something else. Listen, um, if you're Joe Rogan, you know, Same. you've done it. You've done a deal with Spotify, but if the deal comes to an end, you own the show, you know, you can take it somewhere else. Rachel Nichols can take her talents somewhere else. Where? Where else can she take them? It won't be called The Jump. <laughs> she could, you're right. She could take that show to Fox. It won't be called The Jump because she doesn't right. own it. So right. a, a, another part about this is it's unfortunate that we get to the part that I find the most, most entertaining. Whenever there's a spat between two public people like this, other things come out about one of the other people. It's funny that now Maria Taylor's contract uh, turning out $5 million came out. Also, now it comes out that during the NBA bubble, there was a report about Jimmy Butler. Some of you may remember this. Some of you may not. Jimmy Butler having security come to his room because he was making too much noise. He comes to the door, tells the security guard, 
he's working out. He's bouncing basketballs in his room. He's in a full sweat. Well, that all that sounded funny then. Sounds funny now. That's because he wasn't bouncing basketballs, okay? He was in there with Rachel Nichols, allegedly. Allegedly. So that's not was never a secret. There was never a secret, but people didn't talk about it. Now, all of a sudden, it's trending on Twitter. Jimmy Butler is trending on Twitter because of that. Now, I don't know that to be true. Again, that's a rumor about... What does that have to do with the story, though? Because, like I said, when things like this happen publicly about people, and it's one side against another side, things start coming out about both sides of these people that you didn't necessarily hear about before. Okay. Did you ever Let hear me- about that from Rachel Nichols? No, but 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 this right. story, but but this story, think about this. Let me be a cynic here for a moment. You ready? Do it. Okay. You're Maria Taylor. Mm-hmm. You, according to the reports, turned down a $5 million deal. Which is dumb. How, I don't care who how, you are. How could you be so early in your broadcast career and turn down that kind of money and think, no, I want Stephen A money, $8 million a year. Stephen A is the star of the network. And he's 60. And well, he's not 60, but the thing is, I really honestly, I never I didn't know much about Maria Taylor. I really didn't. So for me, I'm like, wow, I mean, she must really be a big star, or she's got a whole lot of confidence that she can hold out. I don't want your five million. I'm waiting for the eight million. So here's the cynic in me. A year ago, this happens. We don't hear about it until this past weekend, okay? Her contract, Maria Taylor, is set to expire any day to the point where she may theoretically not be on the show, may not be employed by ESPN. Rachel Nichols ain't on the finals no more. (laughs) What do you mean by that? She got removed from the sideline reporting duties that she had. Oh, is this is this happening today? It happened this morning. Yeah, yeah, this morning the ESPN announced that she's no longer going to be the sideline reporter for the NBA Finals. She will still be the host of the Jump, but she, like she did yesterday, but she will not be part of the NBA Finals because they don't want to take away from the finals. Okay, well that's probably a smart move, probably a real smart move. But here's the thing: again, cynic here. Okay, so if you're Maria Taylor and you wanted eight million, but they offered you five million. And then they took the five million off the table and lowered it because it's COVID and we're trying to reduce costs and we're actually pushing people out the door, et cetera. Now it's now it's getting to crunch time. No contract has been signed. You've been in negotiations before. The first contract was a we appreciate you, we love you contract. Let's go forward together. And then when she said no, they got the all right. Well, this is a business. This is what we think you're worth. This is what we want to give you. Do you think that's what happened? Well, I think that, you know. During COVID, when somebody gets offered $5 million and and she says no, the company's like, can we survive without her? Yeah, not really a big deal. We can survive without her. So guess what? Is, uh, Lower the number. It, right. Because the question is, like, is Maria Taylor driving in an audience? Oh, no. 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 I don't is Rachel show. Nichols is Rachel Nichols driving in an audience to the NBA so. Finals countdown? No. I don't think so. Was no. Bill Simmons doing it? No. Was Michelle Beadle doing it? Was whoever else was on that pregame? Was Magic Johnson doing it? No, no. no. I mean, nobody. No, I agree. I completely agree. It is a pregame show that is hosted by a rotating panel of people that changes every three or four years. But I, and people will either still watch it, like Browner, or not watch it. There is not a single person on this planet that they can put on the NBA Finals countdown show, and people like me will tune in. I will tell you, you either this: watch pregame shows or you don't. You're. I am more like, I'm not going to say you, I was more likely to watch when it was Bill Simmons, Michelle Beadle, Jalen Rose, and Michael Wilbon, because that was evenly balanced. Well, it's because you had Michael Wilbon. Well, and, uh, yeah. You took a and, selfie with him in Miami. And I, well, okay, true. And that I also really like, I really, oh, get out of here. I really also like Michelle Beadle. I thought she was perfect for the show. But outside of that, no, because I really don't, I, I really don't like Jalen Rose in his current listen, role, and I've never liked Jay Williams. Listen. I love Lewis Riddick. Lewis Riddick's my man, okay? And I think Lewis does a phenomenal job on Monday Night Football. But if they took Lewis Riddick off Monday Night Football and they put in Booger McFarland again, just as an example. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me who the broadcaster is. I told you guys this. Every time we have this conversation about who should be on Monday Night Football, what do I always say? What does it matter? matter. You're still going to watch? Listen. You're still going to watch? Here's another example. Okay, Tony Romo, right? 
we all remember the story about a year and change ago when Tony Romo was going through negotiations with, with CBS. $17 million a year to be an analyst on CBS. Listen, I think Tony Romo's done a nice job, okay? But if, if you told me that they were replacing Tony Romo with Jay Cutler, okay, I'd be like, <laughs> I don't care. Okay. Doesn't matter, doesn't right. matter to me. You know, I mean, there could be like, see, the thing with Tony Romo, though, like, if I'm not comparing the two, but I am comparing the two with Maria Taylor turning down $5 million and Romo taking a $17 million. Maria Taylor is not on Corona commercials. Maria Taylor is not bringing in money to the network. I don't think I would agree the way with Tony that. Romo is bringing in money to CBS because I, I don't think Tony Romo is worth $17 million, but clearly he's bringing in a boat ton of money to the network that kind of cancels out whatever they're paying him. Maria I, Taylor, I don't, I, I, I listen, I could be wrong. I don't think she has any endorsements at all. Any, I don't think they're allowed to have e endorsements no, at ESPN. They, they can, I think. They I can, don't think I, any, I don't think any individual broadcaster is worth the type of money that either Tony Romo got or giving Maria Taylor $8 million. I, yeah. I, I just don't. I mean, Stephen A. Smith to me. Same. I, I don't. He, but, but here's the thing. I think about he's Steve, worth it. But Stephen A. Smith is, is such that he is the star. He is the quarterback at ESPN. You can find Stephen A. Smith on talk shows, oh, on NBA coverage, radio on show, boxing coverage. It's been radio. Stephen A. Smith is the star of the network. So here's an, a rising star in Maria Taylor yeah. that thinks she should be getting the same kind of money. Look, here's the thing about the different. Oh, sorry. Go well, ahead. Here, but here's the thing her contract negotiation has become public. There's there's the $8 million want. There's the $5 million offer. There's the take it off the table and reduce it down to two and a half. And now we're in the, mm. the last few days of this contract. And it's been a year that everybody at ESPN has known about this recording, right? Think about this. Everybody has known about it. So now we're into yeah. the last few days. And if I'm an agent, if I'm Maria Taylor's agent, now's when I strike. Yep. You know who uh you know who is the only person it's a good that point. got you know who is the only person that got punished for this whole thing until today when Rachel Nichols was removed from the sideline reporting gig was the associate producer that shared the clip. Right. She was suspended for two weeks, and according to the same report, she was given like tasks that nobody wants right. well, during the show. Now 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 hold on. <laughs> now let's now this is interesting. Here's Rachel Nichols in her hotel room. Let, let's play it for everybody, because for anybody yeah. that doesn't know what we're talking about, I want to play this for you. Alex has already told us that the reports were earlier today that Rachel Nichols was removed from the NBA Finals. Okay, um, yeah. I, who the they sideline reporter? Who they put in? Did they say Malika Andrews? Okay. 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 Yep. I like her. I, okay. But I know Scott's face is that. Well, because I thought so too. Because because doesn't that just work out conveniently for everybody? Right. Doesn't that just make everybody happy? Uh, Rachel comes off as sounding closet racist. Um, Maria and every African American who works at ESPN has been very supportive of the Maria side. And now they take another young African American female and they put her in there because it sounded like based on the reports, ESPN management was doing everything they could possibly do to make Maria Taylor happy. They were making every accommodation to make her happy. But what, way, I, what I will tell you is this. It, Who's hosting the, the countdown? It's Maria, Maria Taylor. Taylor. Oh, she's actually going to yes. be on TV tonight. Yeah. Yes. Okay, got it. Got it. Malika yeah. Andrews will be replacing her if she doesn't take that $2.5 million, or whether they raise it to three, meet halfway, whatever it is, she will be replaced by the person they're putting on the sideline tonight. And that Because like you said, everybody is replaceable. Do you, the idea that you just interjected or injected it's really funny because that sounds more plausible than anything else I've heard since this entire thing began. So the cynic in you sounds like somebody who's making a really, 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 really good strategical move. Let's get rid of the person who's doing all the NBA stuff that's going to hurt my person because we want our $8 million or $6 million or $7 million, But we want that. We don't want two. So let's if, make sure this other person gets a lot of dirt on their name if that's all that's left over. If I'm, if I'm the agent and I want $8 million, and they offered five, and we turned it down, and they took the offer off the table, how can I get the money that I want? Here's how. I can say publicly, look what has happened here. It's never been shared. Rachel Nichols said this. 
uh, about Maria Taylor. And if, if Maria Taylor doesn't get this new big deal, um, you know, are we looking at lawsuits here? I, I mean, I, I'm just trying to play it all out. That, let's play the that, sound. It, yeah, let, let's play. Here's what Rachel Nichols was caught in her hotel room on a camera, unbeknownst to her, hot, being recorded in Bristol. By the way, a, an associate producer hears all this, records it on her phone, and now she starts spreading it around ESPN because she's an African-American woman and she's highly offended by what Rachel Nichols says. Here's what here's what started this controversy. They said to me, hey, instead of hosting the NBA Finals, like, what did you do during the sound recording after the NBA Finals? Because guess what that would play away for? Uh, for Maria to do the hosting for her. Yeah. Yeah. So, I have declined. I don't know what their next move is, but they are feeling pressure because of all of that. And um, I'm trying to figure out, like, how to just, you know, my thing is, like, I, you know, I wish Marie Taylor all the success in the world. She covers football, she covers basketball. If you need to give her more things to do because you're feeling pressure about your like, crappy long-time record on diversity, which, by the way, I myself, like, know personally from the female side of it, like, yeah, you're not taking away my thing. That's what she said at the end. You're not taking away my thing. Yeah, they are. And they did. Yeah, they did. And Both. they did it again. <laughs> Both. Right. They did it again. What's crazy, though? I mean, listen, I know I am, the like I said, I'm the wrong person to talk about pregame stuff. I did not know Maria Taylor was, was hosting and hosted last year. But I definitely knew Rachel Nichols is on the broadcast. I definitely remember her wearing a mask on the on the finals court. I remember her asking interviews, uh, LeBron James and Anthony Davis questions. Like, so I, I don't know. Like, is that? I don't know, man. I, I will just say this. I don't. I will just that, say that, this. Let, let me just say, sounds like a good gig to me. In the final analysis, here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> this whole thing makes me feel kind of slimy, and I'm just being candid about it. Yeah, get I, back if, to that. Get back if, to that. If my, why? If my, if my big if my big mouth gets me like in trouble with ESPN executives, then then I guess that's the deal. I gotta. I should shut my mouth. And just be a, a good soldier and, and act like I don't have an opinion about all this stuff. But you won't talk about this in LA today. So. Well, of course not, because because here's because number one, you got you got people who are on the, the LA radio show who are very closely connected to this, number one. Mm -hmm. And then you got other people on the LA radio show that will look at me like as if I'm associated with Rachel's side just because I'm white. You know, and I don't like that, man. That doesn't feel comfortable to me. Here's what I'm saying. Um this this whole thing feels very slimy. The fact that she had a conversation recorded in her hotel room that she didn't know about. Mm -hmm. The fact that Rachel Nichols is going to LeBron's PR guy and airing her dirty laundry. The fact that a, a an associate producer heard all of this, recorded it, and spread it doesn't sound right to me, doesn't feel good to me. The fact that Rachel Nichols comes out and apologizes and puts in in harm's way her her co-hosts, her colleagues, guys like oh. Kendrick Perkins and Richard Jefferson. Like the whole thing doesn't feel right. Okay. You know, and, 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 and again, just the last thing for me, I don't know Maria Taylor, but I know the reports and I don't even know if they're 100 percent accurate. But if they are that she was offered five, she wanted eight. They, they removed the offer and took it down to two and a half. If I were her PR people or her, her agent, I would be trying to use this, which has been kept secret for a year. I'd be trying to use this to get more money. And if she does and she signs, where are her principles through all of this? Is it about principles or is it about money? I will say this. I don't think that what Rachel Nichols did to start the jump was proper. What, I, thought, she, I, she, I thought I thought that was low. Fill everybody in, but fill everybody in. So when the show, when the jump starts, she always starts to jump with a monologue, whether it be about something that happened important or some obscure, some statistic, whatever. It's like a good two minute monologue about something. For this particular time, she involved the two Richard Jefferson and Kendrick Perkins in it for whatever reason. Like they had nothing to do with what you said. So you should have 
owned it, and then they should have went to commercial after your apology, which I thought was really like crocodile tears. Like well, I you, really, you, I, I wondered what those two guys were going to say. Like, like were they going to come to her defense? And they, they kind of did in a weird way. But they like, kind of didn't. I, and, and they kind of didn't. At the, I, listen, this story is so complicated. It really is. It, somebody being recorded in their room when they didn't know. Somebody Bro. talking to LeBron's PR people. Somebody saying something that can be construed as racist. Pitting two women against each other. Um, contract negotiations and big dollars. I mean, it's a very complicated and I think very ugly story. I and I'm just telling you it makes slimy, me feel dude. slimy. Yeah. The only thing that's slimy, in my opinion, yeah. is that it was recorded without her knowing in her room. Right. Everything right. else happens all the time. Right. All these conversations, and not just at ESPN, all over Hollywood, all over corporate all America, everywhere. Right. all over everywhere. Right. These conversations are had. Why does this person get this job? Oh, it's because they're this color skin. Why did this, like, she didn't deserve this, or he didn't deserve that. These conversations are had absolutely everywhere, everywhere, all the time. It's that it was re- the slimy part is that somebody recorded it and posted it a year and, later. And the yeah. time, and then now the timing gets all weird. Every yeah. single person has always called someone to vent. That should not be aired, period. It shouldn't be. Let me just say this last thought here, and that is that if you're feeling slimy about anything, call my guy Corky from Corky's Pest Control, because if there's anything slimy on your property or in your house, Corky will take care of it because Corky controls pests. If you have any pest control problems, rats, spiders, termites, nuisance bugs, any sort of rodent problems of any kind, you call that number. Call 1-800-901-1102. Cookies. Yeah, this whole story freaks me out, man. In fact, it's got me so turned off, I may not even watch the NBA Finals. Stick around, everybody. We got a lot more to get to. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Arash Markazi here inviting you to catch my show, The Arash Markazi Show on the Mightier 1090. We are on every Monday through Friday from noon to 1 p.m. Pacific time. Join me and producer extraordinaire G. A. Wiley where we chop up Los Angeles sports and try not to piss too many people off. The all-new and Mightier 1090. With live theater on hold and performers and crew out of work, the folks at Subaru of El Cajon had a great idea. Why not help all the artists and artisans in San Diego put a musical on? And so Sharing the Love was born. This musical collaboration between Subaru of El Cajon and the performing arts community celebrates positivity in the face of strife. Love is for sharing, hate is despairing, there is no comparing the two. Watch Sharing the Love, Saturday and Sunday, only on your view. Welcome to the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank and our 90,000 square foot facility. We feed 350,000 people every single month. Many people ask, how can I help? You can volunteer for the San Diego Food Bank. Just go to sandiegofoodbank.org, register to volunteer. No group is too small, no group is too large, but those volunteers are integral to our success in feeding the community. Another way you can help is by hosting a food drive. Just go online and register your group, your company, your organization, it's that easy. Another great way is through our virtual food drive, where you can literally buy food on our behalf. Lastly, Another great way to make an impact is to go online and make a financial contribution to the San Diego or North County Food Bank. On behalf of the San Diego Food Bank, our staff, our volunteers, and the 350,000 people we serve every month, thank you for helping us fight hunger and feed hope in San Diego County. Kaplan and Crew tonight presents Sports in a Minute. The San Diego Loyal remain unbeaten after a one-to-one draw against Sacramento Republic FC on Saturday. The Loyal had won four straight and were looking for a fifth, but Sacramento was able to keep it even. San Diego has a seven-game streak without a loss, however, since the end of May. Earlier in the week, the Loyal shut out the Oakland Roots. Goalie Austin Guerrero was named to the USL Championship Team of the Week for the shutout. 
This weekend, Deloitte will take on Club Tijuana de Solos at Torero Stadium and look to keep the unbeaten streak alive. I'm Haley Stasiak. That's your Sports in a Minute. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. Pete Gray here, inviting you to catch my show, Let's Talk Hookup, every Saturday and Sunday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Time. For over 30 years, we've been the voice of the fishing community for Southern California, and so glad to be back on the big stick. The all-new and mightier 1090. The Olympic Games, where the world's best athletes will compete on the most prestigious stage. Catch all the action leading up to the Olympic Games on Guide to the Games, every Tuesday on your view. The series examines the qualification process, the history of the games, and the teams and athletes that are expected to shine, plus information about the rules, events, and competitors. Don't miss Guide to the Games, Tuesdays on your view. Love Promise Moments are part of the mission of what we do here at Subaru El Cajon. A love promise moment is when we as human beings deliver an experience beyond exceptional to any one of our guests, and then that guest's life is positively affected by that interaction. It's amazing to watch what happens when two human beings talk on that level and create something magical. And sometimes they drive away with a car, sometimes they don't, but we've had an impact on that person's life and that's the magic. You know, our employees react to things like Make-A-Wish, Feeding San Diego, and the other groups we help by jumping in. This year, through COVID, we were able to help a little girl out and got her a rather large scooter that she needed for mobility. We gave up our Christmas party as employees, and we actually adopted a wish of a young girl here in El Cajon, and we gave her a three-wheel scooter so she didn't have to use her wheelchair all the time. It gives me goosebumps even thinking about it. Let's take it up a notch with Kaplan and Crew tonight's premium boost, powered by the mightier 1090. San Diego is a great place for deep sea fishing because it's home of the largest sport fishing fleet in the world. You can go on a half day trip, a full day trip, multi day trip, all the way up to 18 days to catch tuna and wahoo, or just locally here to catch yellowtail. When booking a deep sea fishing excursion out of San Diego, there's several resources. And of course, the San Diego landings have uh, great web pages seaforthlanding.com, fishermanslanding.com, pointlomasportfishing.com are the perfect resource to book your next fishing vacation out of San Diego. What you need to do if to have fun in the sun while you're out fishing is, of course, you'll have to obtain a California fishing license or a Mexican fishing license, depending on where the trip goes, and then get set up with tackle. All the landings have all the tackle for rental, and they'll give you all the guidance on the boat for catching a lot of fish here in San Diego. Uh, what you should wear out on the water when you're fishing here in San Diego? Layers, and that's the key because you're probably not gonna get very wet uh, because uh, you're going to go out on a nice day, but just be prepared for layers because it can get pretty cool on the water. You know, summertime is always the best from, I would say, June through September, but prime months actually in San Diego, September, October are probably the two prime months. Best water conditions and probably the most abundance of fish. So as far as taking your fish home, they'll fillet the fish for you on the boat and put it into a package for you. Or you can use one of the local processors like Fisherman's Processing that'll vacuum seal and freeze your fish so that you can put it in your cooler and take it home and eat it. Depending on how long your excursion is, you can go anywhere from a half day trip for around $50 plus your license all the way up to a multi-day trip that maybe costs several hundred dollars per day. But a full day trip is going to cost you about $150 a day, depending on the uh, Mexican license or California licenses that you need to get. Kaplan Accrued Tonight's premium boost is powered by the Mightier 1090. Kaplan Accrued Tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Soldiers selects dogs from shelters and rescue groups all throughout California. Our ideal candidate at Shelter to Soldier is eight months to a year and a half old. They're confident in different environments, they have strong social drive, 
uh, another motivator like food or toy drive. And ultimately, these are dogs that want to have a job uh, and that have a greater purpose to become a service dog. Currently about 85% of our dogs pass their service dog training. But if they don't pass, they become a career change. Uh, we don't like to use the word failure around here. Um, so career change to an emotional support animal, or if that doesn't work out, then they career change to a pet dog. Still finding a loving placement and purpose in life.